I'm Amy Williams and I am here with the You Perform channel and I've got Charlie Unwin here, performance psychologist. Tell us what is it that you actually do? Hey Amy, yes, um, performance psychology isn't sort of particularly well known but basically uh, I work with some amazing people really uh, in all fields, so it's mainly sports. Uh, but also business, military, surgeons, fighter pilots, basically anyone um, who has significant mental demands on what they do. Um, and really, I use uh, research to help them perform at their best uh, and apply themselves mentally to what they do. God, an incredible amount of people. So where did that first fascination with the mind for you like come from? Yeah, I think very early, to be honest. Uh, my, my earliest recollections, I, I was brought up on a farm in the, the sort of Essex, Suffolk, Cambridgeshire border. And living in the middle of nowhere, I had a lot of time to myself. I was quite an introspective kid. I, I think I got to know my own mind pretty quickly <laughs> and kind of make sense of the world around us. And um, probably there was a girl as well, very young, and uh, she was way out of my league, I seem to remember. I remember... Um, buying a book sounds a bit desperate but I remember buying a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People Bless uh, you. I know it sounds awful <laughs> doesn't it but it turns out this was actually a real classic of its time so I'm allowed to say that now and uh, I, I think my affections for this particular girl probably wore off fairly quickly but what I read in that book stayed with me uh, after that and has stayed with me ever since and it got me fascinated in people the way they think the way they behave mm. so is that what kind of made you then want to go more into then sports psychology or that link between sport the mind and performance we well, see i never knew there was a link between sport and psychology uh, sport was very much in the blood for me but my dad played rugby for england and the british lions so I very much had sport around me growing up, uh, quite an eclectic mix of sports I did from rugby to athletics to horse riding as well. And um, I, one thing I noticed fairly on is that when, when things started to get serious, when I wanted to do really well, my performance often really fluctuated. And I know we'll get the opportunity to talk more about this, uh, which was really frustrating. And so... Um, I realised that this was as much a product of what was going on up here as it was my ability to do something. Uh, I read a book, another book, from Steve Backley, who you might remember, the javelin thrower. I just love watching him. Yeah, yeah he was one of my idols, was athletic he? idols. Yeah. It, yeah, he was incredible. And, and again, quite an introspective person. He actually wrote a book on sports psychology. And this was the first time I realised that sport and psychology had actually met and they had quite a good relationship as well. And the research was growing and growing and has done hugely over the last 20 years. Uh, and really, it kind of made me think, well, if, if, you know, throwing a pointy stick as far as you can, if there's, a, if there's a real mental game to being able to do that well and consistently under pressure, uh, then this was an area that I wanted to explore. And you used to do modern pentathlon, mm. so I guess for you, you could first of all start to take those lessons that either Steve Backley had managed to, you know, teach you in the book, and I guess practically you were able to do these lessons, and then you've always, you know, you've learned from them to be able to pass on to other athletes. Yeah, definitely, I, I think so much of what I do now is built not just on academic knowledge but on experience and self-reference. I, I, never, I never ask any athletes to do anything I either haven't done myself or don't routinely practice myself, even now. Um, I, probably I, I got into psychology professionally earlier than I thought, although technically I wasn't a psychologist, I, I joined the army. Um, I'd done a, a degree in psychology at university and in joining the army, I realised very quickly that psychology is all around us. It's in the way that we communicate, in the way that we apply ourselves to learning new skills and especially to, to performing under, under pressure. Um, I, I joined, I, I went to the Royal Military Academy Santa, so I did my officer training. I joined on September the 9th, 2001. So basically two days before the planes flew into the Twin Towers. Uh, and for me, my expectations going into the army were very different a few days later. Uh, at the age of 23, I, I found myself 
on the front line in Iraq as a platoon commander, so in, in charge of about 30 soldiers. Um, and I, I, a lot of people ask me, would you have joined if you, know, if you knew that that was what you'd end up doing? Um, and the honest answer is I don't know. But, but what I do know and has reflected on a lot since is that the army are incredible at, at training not just your knowledge and skills, but also y your character and your self-belief. And they spend a lot of time working on you as a person and, and developing you. And I think for me, that's been a really important takeaway into the stuff that I do now. Because I think sports can be guilty of being seduced by talents and physical ability, which can sometimes take away from those who have that somewhere beneath the surface but that no one ever really helps them develop as people, develop their character, their belief, their confidence to almost unlock that. Mm. So Charlie, I mean, I'm, I'm a military wife. I'm married to a, an army man myself. Yes. Um, for you being in Iraq, how did you find that situation that you had to perform, you had to take control mm. and you had you know, things changing around you and almost that performance under pressure? How, how then did you find that? I think the irony is that most of the time I really struggled in training to do all the right things. They, they put you under pressure a lot in training. One, again, one of the key messages for me, which I take now into sport, is we've got to practice pressure. It's got to be part of our day to day. We can't just wait until we get there. And again, I know we'll have some fascinating conversations about your experiences on this. For me, I, I always struggled in training and when we got out there and did it for real, I was amazed at how we were all able to do it so effectively. It was pretty rough. In 2004, we, we were being attacked in camp about four times a day um, and there's no greater tests for how you perform and think under pressure than being shot at. But, um, but like I say, practicing pressure became a real cornerstone of the stuff that I do. And when I got back from Iraq, um, I got into sports a lot more, which is actually where when we met. Um, and we were both training at Bath at the time. And, um, and I got into pentathlon, as, as you mentioned earlier. I won't go into the five sports of pentathlon. We could literally be here all day. Shooting, fencing, swimming, riding and running. Um, I wasn't the most talented of athletes. I, I really wasn't. And, and that's not me being sort of modest in any way. What I had to depend on is the, the mental game. What I realised very quickly is that when you've got a, a sport like pentathlon, there are some athletes who are up there one day and down there the next. And very often, the more talented they are, the more up and down they are. Because often people rely on their talent, rely on their physical skill. And, and so I thought, well, if I can be near my best every single time, I'll be quite difficult to beat. But having that level of consistency required applying myself in a way that perhaps um, we weren't taught or perhaps other people didn't do. So I, I reinvested in psychology and, and I got back into it and, and it's kind of led to, to where I am now. You know what, I can't wait for us to be chatting a little bit more later and dive into how you did it and what your techniques were and well, we likewise. do a bit of yeah. comparison. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Charlie, you left the army, you got into sport yourself and clearly at some point you, you stopped sport and then started working with performance athletes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I soon realised that my real vocation was going to be helping other people uh, apply the stuff that I'd learnt over time. I went back to university, did a master's in, in sports psychology, really to allow me to formalise some of the ideas that, that I'd developed. And it's those ideas and, dare I say it, system that, that I now use today. So I was lucky enough to get asked to, to come and work with lots of uh, Olympic teams, uh, whether it be fencers, swimmers, equestrians and of course skeleton as well which is where, which is where I met Lizzie Yarnold who at the time was very much hanging on to your coattails yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and plenty of examples that I know we'll be able to explore from from that world and uh, and also managed to do a little bit of work with England football as well because for them I think it was 
Psychology isn't something they've always used or relied very much, but in the Gareth Southgate era, uh, that they were bringing in outside people a lot more. So got to work with men and women, especially around things like penalty taking um, and key pressure moments. And, uh, and I think that's something that certainly for him, he, he's used to define the difference between his team and previous generations. But for you, it's, it's not all about sport, is it? Tell us, I mean, what's, what's daily life now? What are you kind of focusing on? Yeah, I very soon realised that all the stuff that we did was, it was about the human condition. It wasn't just about athletes. And some of the earliest emails I got from, from youth athletes, young rugby players, for example, working with them in school, for example, was not about uh, thank you for helping me in my sports, but thank you for helping me in my exams. And reflecting on it, we never did anything on exam technique or anything like that, but I think people naturally see these techniques as a way of helping them in life. And whether you know, your teenagers you know, transitioning a very di difficult part of your life whether you're trying to balance being at work with being a full-time mum, uh, with also trying to do a bit of sport as well. Uh, I think this stuff becomes really valuable in every aspect, and that's what makes it so enjoyable. So, Charlie, it's been great talking to you today. Fill us in a little bit about what we can expect next week. Well, the, the whole... <sighs> The reason I'm so excited about being able to do this is because uh, it's an opportunity to share some of these ideas that have been percolating over the years, techniques, ideas, exercises for people to actually do. So, um, so that's the kind of longer term plan. Next week, we're just going to focus on uh, my approach and sort of key philosophy, get people to sort of understand how to think differently about their own performance and in, in particular their mental performance. Love it. Great. Well, it's been amazing talking to Charlie today. Don't forget to subscribe to the You Perform channel. Click on the bell and we will see you next week.